Well, hello there. Uh, hello. Welcome to the show. <laughs> yeah, thank you, uh, David. Uh, so we, of course, we have David Lotherington here today, and uh, thank you all, audience members, for joining us as well. Um, so in case you noticed, I did a little upgrading on my uh, intro video, so uh, you can go enjoy that. But um, thank you, audience members. Nancy, thank you. <laughs> Uh, it's great seeing you again um, and everybody else. Okay. Okay. So let's go into our uh, featured guest. David Lotherington is a Akashic record, uh, record reader, healer, and telepath. He is also a Melchizedek high priest that can channel communications with non-terrestrial beings, ascendant masters, angels, galactics, and God. David has recall of his past lives, including Sun Tzu, Marcus Aurelius, Robert the Bruce, Achilles, Seagru the Snake in the Eye, Lancelot du Lac, Little John, De Artagian, <laughs> D'Artagnan. No, I'm not trying. King <laughs> David and Ma, Ma, Mopsis of the Agronauts. He currently resides in Nova Scotia. Uh, so um, he's also been on our show a couple of times, and the last time we went into some of this content, but uh, I don't know if we're going to really have time to. Well, we'll see. But he has been involved with programs his entire life, beginning at least the age of four years old and up. He recalls being trained at Area 51, where he met Peter the Insider. He also remembers being a facility that trained his shape-shifting abilities, in which I was also a participant of, and turned me into a giant cat. He recalls experiences as a super soldier in Kruger and has done training missions with zombie and vampires. Uh, today we'll be conducting, well, I say a lecture, but we'll, maybe we'll make it a little bit more informal sounding <laughs> be, uh, yeah, we'll a thinking it. session on how to integrate soul shard aspects in order to heal to heal or help SSP, MyLab, MKUltra, Monarch, ET, et cetera, experiencers recover their memories. So David's website is davidlotherington.com and his school is theol.com, T-H-O-E-L dot C-A. Okay. Uh, thank you, David. How are hey. you? Thank you for the intro. It sounds awesome. Yeah. Thank you for coming on here. So uh, I know we've got a um, lot of um, interesting topics to share today. I thought we could start off with uh, some uh, this, these drawings. Of course, uh, I guess if you've seen the, uh, the thumbnail pick for this video, you can see some of Christie's artwork. So what mm -hmm. I'm going to do, my computer cooperates with me. Okay. It's cooperating. <laughs> I just don't hold on a second. Let me just uh, get. I love uh, light language work. It's always amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, we've got we've got a translation here, um, and it's working this time. Great. So, can you see that? Yes. All right. So, um, Christy uh, drew this, and this is uh, David's on the left, and there's me on the right um, as Arcturians. And I guess a past life, or I think it might have been a future life. I don't know. Um, or, They're all occurring in the now anyway. So, yeah, um, I was Arcturian scientist um, at some point. But um, I'm, before we actually read the translation, um, what I'm going to do is, if I can figure out which button to press, I think this these were the words here that got translated. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll read that in just a bit. Let's see here. Oh, there's you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So she's um, she does this automatic writing, and um, and by the way, Christy's gonna be coming on her show soon to explain a little bit more about what she does. But you can see some of her artwork here. We I don't know the translation. It this is not. It wasn't very clear, so we didn't really translate it's this. Hard, it's hard to read with the font uh, that way. But um. David, why don't you explain uh, how how to translate these uh, these words? What what do you do when you? Well, I can read light codes and light language. Um, I can't actually explain how I can do it, but I can do it. Um, it's this font is stylized, which makes it more difficult. But it depends on. Um, so essentially, everything that you write down, every email that you have ever written. Your energy is in the message that you send to a person. So if you write an email for, to someone and you, um, you're very vengeful to that person, they might feel like a resistance in themselves. Their ears might get warm or something while they're reading the message. 
that's the energy that's behind the message. And it's the same thing when you're reading light codes or light language. Um, you just read the energy behind it and you can connect to the translation of it. It doesn't matter what language it's written in. Okay, great. So let me go ahead here and read the translation. Oh, uh -oh. There oh sorry. okay. Can you see it now? Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, breaking sharing knowledge, breaking apostrophe sharing knowledge over breakfast is akin to dining with the gods. Line one. Sharing knowledge with friends brings meaning to life and expansion of thought. Line two. Remembering friends with each other. Line three. Uh, so that's those are the three lines above. Um, I think this is for the different uh, picture, though. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it's this one here. Yes, this one. Yeah. Okay. So we've got the left side says the name of the being on the left and a little bit about them. And they are balanced and centered. So that's David. And the right is uh, me, uh, focused and determined. Um, so the writing between the names, uh, where it says brothers, means uh, brought together through friendship. The symbol below the infinite symbol meaning prosperity, the symbol at the top with the infinite symbol. Okay, so there you have it. That's all we got. <laughs> anyway. All right, so um, I guess, is there any other comments you want to have about that or before we move on? Well, well regarding light language, uh, I have a picture over here. I don't really want to take it off my wall, but um, perhaps you might be able to see. Oh, shoot, it's not the best setup. Um, I'll take it down. Just give me one moment. All right. So um, while David's doing that, I uh, just want to remind audience members, if you have any questions for David, or I guess for me, but uh, mostly hopefully for David, um, just go ahead and put it in the, uh, the chat bar there and um, we'll get to it when the time is appropriate or, oh, we got a, a cat man. <laughs> so this is a Lyran. Uh, I can't remember the name of the artist off the top of my head, unfortunately, but as you can see, there's lots of light language written all over the, the feline. See if you can get a better view of it. Mm -hmm. I did not draw this. Um, and it's essentially telling a story. Um, all of this light language is telling a story of the life of the being and how to live with prosperity. As you can see down here, there's more light codes. So it's kind of hard to show. But um, yeah, light language is totally awesome. It's the quantum language, essentially. So. Uh, one, one sec. That essentially means yeah. that. Excellent. So, sorry, go ahead. Is that a tiger? That is uh, Marua. It's uh, a Lyran, galactic. Uh, do they walk upright or are they on their four legs? Yeah, they walk on two legs. That's my captain. Okay. Are they like sentient? Like Oh, clear? very much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. They're about eight feet tall. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So essentially light language can be translated differently by different people that can read light language. So if, if you were able to translate that, you would probably get something very different from what I received, but it would be the same kind of concept. Wow. Very nice. And, um, well, so have you actually en had encounters with these beings in person or? Or is this... I, I have in my previous life, as Lupi and I do remember, Maru is actually the being that uh, made me come back for another mission. That was helping me to create this body, actually. Okay. So th they get along, oh, I mean, as a Lupin, do they get along with humans too? Or do they look yeah, down? Yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Their hugs are very dangerous, apparently. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because they don't very... realize their strength. Okay. <laughs> Or the claws, okay. Yeah, more of the um, Okay, well, here's a question from an audience. Uh, Facebook user wants to know what about his uh, percentage of his ET race genetics. Um, do you know what, what, what kind of genetics you might be? Yeah, I have 15% um, Plejarin, which is a Pleiadian species. I have 11% High Syrian, which is uh, Lupin um, from Sirius B. And then I have 6% um, Pterosaurian, which is a reptilian species, the, the native species of uh, Terra. And then I have 4% Yael. They're like um, a gray human hybrid. And I have 1% Arcturian. Excellent. All right. So this was from 
back in 2019, uh, David um, did, uh, looked up my genetics and he said, I'm 11% Saurian reptilian. Um, looks like the reptile guy in Spider-Man. So I, I don't really know if I would look like that, but um, sl slit eyes, greenish eyes, 6% uh, Palladian with my blue eyes, 4% Yael. I actually got four, four Yael hybrid kids. One of them is Nikolai um, because um, I, I worked with Nikola Tesla in another timeline. Mm -hmm. um, Yael's are an offshoot of the grays. They are also calculative. They have no empathy, not very emotional, but this no, movie, they, they definitely have empathy and they definitely are emotional. Um, okay. Okay. Well, they, they certainly were telling me some pretty good jokes. So anyway, um, 3% Arcturian, 2% Lyran. And then you said I was like 23 other species of other stuff. So. Well, all humans are composed. The natural, what is known as human is 23 plus different species. That's just naturalized human DNA. Okay, great. Yes, that's the artist. Nalini Dior Sara. Thank you. All right. Thank you for sharing it. Okay. Um, so people are asking, how can we also get our DNA breakdown of you from you? How do we do that? Uh, if you want to book a session with me, uh, I can do it for you on a private basis. But um, I, I just can see people's DNA codes. They're Adam Cadman. They're original DNA blueprint, essentially. That's what I just see. So. A great question from Thomas. Um, are you in contact with your alters? <laughs> Thomas wants to know if you have any female alters. <laughs> what, do you, um, what do you think about that one? I've integrated my alters. There's still some left. But so contact, yes, but they're a part of me now. But that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to try to reintegrate your alters. You can have communication with them for a period of time until they fully reintegrate with you. And then you become a collective consciousness eventually when they uh, reintegrate with you. All right. Well, why don't we just start off a little bit here? Um, why don't you explain what an altar is or, or what you think it is in your definition? And we can, I guess, go from there. Sure. So an altar, also known as a particle, is uh, a, a lesser component of one's soul. You are a soul as a being. You begin as a spirit. You receive limitation through the Cal force and through the matrix. And these two forces actually, that's weird seeing myself on the screen. Um, they combine together um, to provide you with limitations so you can have a physical experience. That is, um, James, can you show yourself? It's weird for me talking to myself. Thanks. Um, <laughs> Are you nervous? Okay, that's fine. We can yeah. talk like this. Okay, thanks. That's much better. I, I don't like talking to myself. It's weird. Um, <laughs> okay, so as you uh, become a soul, I won't go through the whole process of going into the physical body and whatnot, but um, the soul can be fractured, and the soul often does fracture itself, so it can have multiple experiences at the same time. Um, however, in the super soldier program, it's very, well, the older generations used to use trauma to fracture the consciousness uh, into several different alters. Um, each altar is essentially its own personality, and they serve a function in your overall system, which is you as a collective being. All of your chakras have consciousness, and you are a large amount of beings in one physical body, which you call James. And same with me, but it's called David. Um, so altars are your consciousness divided. In a nutshell. All right. And um, why is it that uh, some people, um, when they go through trauma, they die as compared to others split off trauma, um, split off these altars? Is it maybe the size of their soul or the type of soul? That's a great question. So the soul can only incarnate into the body or be in the body as long as the body is viable. So you may notice with females, uh, when they're pregnant, sometimes that the rule is you don't tell someone that you're pregnant until you're three months past that three month period. So at the three month period, what occurs is that is the point where the soul chooses to incarnate into that fetus or not. If the fetus is not viable because of something's not properly created in that fetus, 
then a soul won't be able to incarnate into that and they just won't. So the soul gives the fetus the energy it needs to create uh, more cells and to divide and be healthier and whatnot. Thank you. All right. Um, so there are um, some individuals that can um, get their memories back and others when they go through this dissociation process, they seem to be more stuck. Um, what is it about the soul and maybe we can des describe it as in its crystalline type aspect as like a crystal that shatters and, uh, and it's in maybe is the, the MK ultra data being planted into these cracks within the soul. Is that one way we could describe it? I didn't quite, I didn't quite address your question. Uh, the first question. So some people die because the trauma to the body is too great. Other people's fracture, uh, and they create multiple altars. Sometimes they might create 200 altars, sometimes maybe just one. Um, the goal for the SSP is to fracture the soul enough so that they can access higher dimensional aspects um, because higher dimensional aspects have higher dimensional abilities. So if they take that personality, that aspect, and they put that into a clone or a body, then that being will have higher dimensional abilities and the rest can be, they will just drift around or they'll be part of a disassociative identity disorder, which is essentially what a fractured consciousness actually is scientifically. Wow. Thank you. All right. So let's discuss maybe how these altars are actually created and programmed through MK ultra. Do you, do you, are you aware of the process of, of what they do? I don't know how they do it. Um, but I do know that there are different types of altars. There are altars that are littles. These are essentially you, I believe it's under the age of seven in identity. So that being doesn't grow. Uh, some of them do grow, but, um, there, it, it'd be like you from your childhood that never grows. It never matures. It's just kind of stuck there. Um, there are defender identities or consciousness or aspects. There are trauma holding aspects as well. This is very common when the consciousness is fractured from trauma. I don't know how they do it. Mm -hmm. Um, they use a combination of drugs and, um, hip hypnosis of sorts. Okay. Well, um, what I'm going to do is I will just quickly read something here from my book. Um, let's, so let's see if we can try to, we can skip them killing a puppy. Let's skip that part. That's, but uh, each session, a new altar is created. The altars are programmed with compressed details and message. This is done using high tech headsets in conjunction with computer driven generators, which emit inaudible sound waves or harmonics that affect the RNA covering of the neuron pathways into the subconscious and unconscious mind. Because the RNA sheaths are programmed using harmonics, the risk of a monarch breaking out of the programming is next to nothing. These ultrasonic frequencies are used as an activation code or trigger, which can be sent over phone or satellite to an implant, for instance, to activate a monarch at any given point. Um, oh yeah, so we got virtual, re okay. All right, well, I guess we can probably just move on here. Different amnesia laser layers. The brain is capable of holding, storing 100 million billion bits of information, but few people actually use all this. So with MPD multiple or DID, um, which are essentially the same thing, uh, use more of the space by running more computers in their brain, which is going on at the same time. The core is the soul essence. This records everything that is done to it, including all memories of all alters. The core runs the entire program in the background outside the awareness of the main personality. So that's why we're looking at some of these controlling alters seem to be programmed like a computer, which is what we, I guess, Dr. Greenbaum referred to as a core. And uh, so when we were doing some session work um, between you and I, we were witnessing some kind of a computer um, at the back of my spine near my, my head. Mm. Do you remember that? That was a while ago now. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember if that was an implant or if that was something else, but so the alters are given different classifications such as alpha, beta, data, delta, or theta, sorry, or mega. Alpha refers to, to general programming, beta is sexual programming, delta or killer, theta are psychic killers, omega are self-destruction program, and uh, omega is especially can be triggered when monarch breaks away from the programming. So that's why it's very important 
to uh, deactivate these type of suicide type programming mm -hmm. if you're going to be messing around with this. Um, so um, what kind of uh, program do you have available to actually, um, let's say, diffuse the, um, the um, I wouldn't necessarily call it a, I don't, maybe, maybe there's a demonic also attached to this too. Um, the certain that, could, that could happen. That could yeah. happen. So how, what, how would you go about that? Helping someone like that? Well, I would go through, I'm going to educate all of you guys today in soul reintegration process. That's how you fix it. This is how you get out of the super soldier program. This is how you become complete. This is how you get your memories back. This is how you get become more psychic, more powerful. And this is how you heal yourself all at the same time. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Um, well, let's see here. I, let me just quickly go through this. Um, anything here that's relevant. Of course, they, the core uses different types of uh, the deepest parts are the core, the gems. I don't know what that is. Executive committee, false trinity, etc. cetera, chartered and esoteric language such as Enochian, Hebrew, which is considered magical as well as Druid. So, uh, yeah, that's why I guess was, we're talking about black magic and certain demonics attached to these as well. But um, the first program, yes, the first program needs to be is Omega. Um, once that's diffused, then you can go into what is what you would call the executive control board. And um, but the thing is, a lot of these these people have also been implanted with femtonites, pictonites, nanites, and that is also, um, I believe, attached and props to their pineal gland and affecting their ability to open up a portal to God source in order to to integrate themselves. So yeah. Make These people easy. won't, your people won't have to worry about this because what we're going to be doing essentially is we're going to be taking the souls from their broken, they're not broken, but from out of the clone bodies and we're going to be bringing them back to us where they belong. Okay. Well, is this, is it like a meditation, this practice? Well, or Sort of. Yes. It's going to okay. take a period of time for people to to do this. It's not going to happen today. I'm okay. going to give you guys all the information that you need to know to do it, but you're going to have to do this on your own time. It's a process that takes years, sometimes even longer for people. Okay. Well, where do we begin? Okay. So first we start by knowing you're a soul. Okay. You're an infinite being that gave yourself limitation and that limitation allows you to experience a physical reality in 3D. Now, for those of you who are in the super soldier program, your consciousness is probably fractured, which means you have altars, which means they're running missions. They're not all super people. Some of them are super soldier accountants, super soldier laborers, etc. But still, your soul is in that body performing a function. And that means that Wherever your consciousness is, that's where your memories will be. So if you're not quantumly entangled to that individual, then you're not going to have access to those memories. But whenever you, for example, James, ha have access to any memories from your super soldier lives, that's because you're quantumly entangled to that being in that moment. And the only reason why you can remember that is because your consciousness is in that body. So, for example, when you drink alcohol uh, and you black out, your consciousness can't handle, your body can't handle having too much alcohol in it. So your consciousness will actually go to the background, kind of like when you're channeling and your system is unviable. So any being that's around can jump in and drive the container. That's uh, it's essentially possession. Um yeah, it's unfortunate, but um, as long as your consciousness is there, you'll have memories. If your consciousness isn't there, you don't have memories. That's one thing I want you guys to take on. Um, so where do we begin? <clears throat> you have all of these little pieces of yourself that are on other planets. They're in galactic bodies. They're in the inner earth, the hollow earth, you name it. They're everywhere. 
and they might even be in other human bodies like one soul can be in multiple bodies at the same time and as you reintegrate this together what happens is you don't have to worry about killing them i know that's going to be on some people's minds so when you remove the soul from a being you kill it this is quantum so what this means is essentially you you pull the soul out of that body and you bring it back to yourself and you reintegrate that that becomes a part of you again which makes you feel more complete but that being that you took the soul from which is yours lives its entire life to its completion and to that being when it dies its soul goes back to you so this is why this is all quantum um so that's a part that's difficult to understand in the beginnings but okay so i have to give you guys some warnings because if you do too much of this too quickly it can cause you to hear the voices of your alters and this will make you think that you're crazy potentially this is multiple personality disorder this is what's occurring with them there's different alters that are existing in the same aura and they each want to take take a turn driving so that is actually what DID is or multiple personality disorder. They're the same condition, but DID is more acceptable, I suppose. Now, in order to do that, you're going to want to bite off small pieces. So I, I explain this to uh, students, clients as opening up a can of worms. Each time you reintegrate an altar, it's opening up a can of worms. If you open that can and you leave it there without addressing it properly and treating it uh, with respect, then the worms are all going to crawl out. There's going to be worms all over your table and crawling on the floor. It's going to be a big mess. So when you start the integration process, you want to make sure that you're focused on fully integrating that one can before you open up more cans. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So go at this slow. Go at this slow or else you will hear voices in your head mm -hmm. and you'll have to you'll hear the voices until you integrate that consciousness um so that might take a three days i i integrated one in about three days but it might take longer if it takes three weeks then you that might affect your everyday life like it might affect your job and whatnot so it can be very distracting so that's why you want to really focus on this if you have the time um to reintegrate them completely before getting into others. The second thing I want to warn you guys about, even though this is amazing, and this is like probably one of the top, this is definitely in the top 10 things that you can do to make your life better in every way, um, because you're going to be more complete as a person. And we'll get into that later. Is um, I lost my train of thought. Well, we were discussing about rehoming altars. Oh, yes. Possibly yes. becoming schizophrenic. Yes, thank you. Uh, it wouldn't be schizophrenic, technically, but it would be DID. So we just have to be careful. So the other thing you have to be cautious about is trauma holding altars. These are altars that were the sex uh, altars. What did you call them, James? The um, sexually trained altars? Uh, kittens or beta, beta sex kittens. Yeah something like that um there's also altars that take all the trauma um these are the trauma holding altars that protect the rest of the consciousness from those memories so you don't have to experience them so usually with people with the idea is maybe they'll be raped or something sorry to say that word on your program but um that causes a terrible memory at one point in that being's life so the trauma holder says i'll take that you won't have to remember this, but I'm going to have to break off from you. And then you're going to have a peaceful life. But this being doesn't have memories from seven to eight years old anymore. But this trauma holder still exists somewhere in their field. So when you do your soul reintegration, this main collective or body, which is you, will start to integrate the trauma holder. When that happens, that can cause um, you to become very um, sensitive emotionally. 
you can become very unstable during that time. You might be quick to anger. For example, you might just burst out into tears and not know why you're crying. This is your trauma holding alter reintegration. So these are like extra large cans of worms, you might say. So they're, I would say do them last and uh, deal with the easier stuff first. Okay. So let's talk about the next phase. The next phase is you want to start with the lowest dimension possible. And that's the zero dimension. You are a God and each of you, your particles or aspects are in all the different dimensions from zero to nine. Cal says nine is the creator or whatnot. And zero is like basic things like usually elements, rocks, and some plants. These are in the zero to one dimension. And uh, anyway, but you're also in these lower dimensions, okay? So as you begin to pull in your aspects, your alters, you start reintegrating first the most, uh, the lowest dimensional aspects of yourself. So from zero to one. And then when that's done, you'll start reintegrating from one to two, and then from two to three. And the ones in the beginning are very easy because they're simple. But as you get to the third dimensional aspects that you start to reintegrate, you start to feel greater effect from reintegrating these. So for example, I had this little, which was me at uh, about six years old. And I was, I had no idea of any of this stuff many years ago. And I was in this meditation class and um, I seen this little me crying in a corner in this dark shadowed corner. And I said, what is it? Um, so I approached the child, which is me, and I put my hand, I reached my hand out to help them to get up to stop them from crying or whatnot. And they lashed out at me. And as they came out, their face kind of shape shifted into this monstrous looking thing. And I was like, ah, so I backed up and I was like, I don't know if I'm ready for whatever this is right now. So the next day I went back at it. I meditated again. And my intention was to ask Archangel Michael to assist me with helping this little of myself. And essentially what happened was Archangel Michael walked up to the little boy uh, with me and he placed his hand on my hand. And then we essentially just said, it's okay. You're not going to be hurt anymore. And it's safe. You're safe. So I, at that moment, I started to hear the little David in my consciousness. It sounds like telepathic conversation. You, It's almost like there's two voices instead of just one that you normally will have. And um, what happened was for about three days, that little was in my field. And I had cravings for very odd things. And I was just told by my guides to um, just give them whatever they need to make them happy. And that's going to help them to reintegrate that much faster. So I wanted to talk to strangers and just, I'm normally very reclusive as a person. I don't really talk to that many strangers, um, but I was very outgoing and I wanted to talk to these people I knew nothing about. I wanted to eat ice cream. I wanted to go to the store. I wanted to enjoy like playgrounds and stuff like that. Um, that's what it's like during the reintegration process. So you may take on attributes of that being and bring that into yourself as you're doing it. So after I reintegrated, after approximately three days, I felt more complete. I felt my emotions came back more. I felt more playful and I felt more open to talking to people. So that's happened many, many, many times for me. And because I've reintegrated so many alters from, I'm actually on the eighth dimensional alters now, which is making me aware of my other lives. So I'll, I'll tell you some advantages to that. As you reintegrate an altar that's a higher dimension than yourself, whether it's fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, whatever, um, you gain attributes of those beings. So you might become more telepathic or you might become aware of the memories that they have. You might be able to... Um, do different psychic things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to access. So the other day I was teaching a class and I was also reintegrating Odin as one of my aspects. 
and I started teaching the class on Jotunheim and Midgard and Asgard and all of these nine realms of the tree of life. And I have no education on that whatsoever on the Norse gods or uh, how they live their life or the nine realms, but I knew that information because of Odin. So that's, that's a really great start. Wow. Certainly. Um, we, uh, so I guess it sounds like we should start for maybe our inner child. Is that what this? Yeah. I think all of us probably have an aspect of the inner child that could, even if I don't really think you've been through MK Ultra, you could probably in integrate some of that. Um, all right. So, uh, so then you start working on to the next level, um, the more difficult altars. Uh, some of these might have actually been, say, utilized in the secret space program. But um, what if you have, um, say, like uh, an implant that's affecting your pineal gland or, or just they're just trying to shut you down with the, uh, the nanite goo um, that some of us have? So you are, you, You're powerful enough to to go around that as a being don't let any implant or any goo or anything make you believe that you're more limited than you actually are these are ideas of limitation like oh this is that so i i'm a victim and it's because of that that i'm not strong enough to overcome this that's what they want you to believe but you are strong enough to control anything in your field this is your hologram that and you're in control of it all right david well i guess alternatively um the human consciousness is most the hum humans on this planet are highly toxic from the the chemtrails and the mercury and the aluminum to the point where most people are tuned in to radio frequencies rather than these higher dimensional aspects like you are um so um i guess Maybe we're both right here, but um, either way, maybe. We, okay. How about we just, uh, let's move on to another topic. So sure. Um, what is it? What, how do you actually rehome your altars to you? Um, is there like a, a mantra or is there, um, do you yeah. ask the kingdom Michael? Okay. Why don't you go I, ahead I wouldn't start. necessarily say it's a mantra, but it is an intention that you set. So Take, it takes three deep breaths to switch your brain from central nervous system to the peripheral nervous system. That's when you're doing, you're only able to do psychic work in the peripheral nervous system. So that's the rest and relax or the feed and breed mode. As long as you're in fight or flight mode, you can't do psychic work essentially. Um, it's just like you can't poop while you're in fight or flight mode either. Yeah. So if you're still being trauma, because uh, a lot of people from MK Ultra Monarch are living with individuals that are act like more like handlers than friends or family so it seems like you almost have to get away from that situation before you can start to heal and i know that's what that's what it was like for me when i was around certain a certain family member that would constantly traumatize me over and over until she died yeah. but um anyway um so uh, i actually started to let go of the trauma and meditation helped me out with that um, but maybe there's a faster process and I keep hearing my ears keep ringing. That's strange. Go <laughs> downloads, ahead. Downloads. Um, there is some stuff for your inner child. I know that has to be addressed, but anyway, we can do that on a private session perhaps in the future. Um, cause I, I, could I already, feel I already did an exorcism. I had to do an exorcism on it, but anyway, um, so, uh, how about we, um, Okay, so what what's the next step or process you want to well, go? Well, let's tell the people how they can start this process. Yeah. Okay. So after you take three deep breaths, it might take more for some of you. Of course, it might take ten, it might take thirty. Um, but anyway, rest. Maybe lay down on the couch, but don't fall asleep. Lay down in your bed, but don't fall asleep or sit up. Whatever. Relax. Take some deep breaths, and then your intention is to heal and to reintegrate your self so what you're going to be doing or visualizing is you your hands are extended you're pulling in your soul from everywhere that it exists and you're bringing it back and it's coming into you it's like flying into you that's what you're imagining you might not be imagining it you might be seeing it in the post plasmic layer or the quantum fluid or whatever you want to call the astral um 
but that's your intention. You're pulling in your particles and you might experience that right away. You might begin to see memories from past parallel previous lives. Uh, you might receive a quantum entanglement from one of these beings as well, which can be um, a little bit traumatic. I'll give you a quick example of that before we move on. One of my students, she had um, a quantum entanglement with a being that was her, but from a parallel reality that was not a nice version of her. And that being is quite powerful, just like she's quite powerful. And it was trying to do things to her to reintegrate her back into him or them. So that kind of stuff can happen during the soul reintegration process. If that happens, book a session, you know, we'll work through it together kind of thing. Um, but that's not going to happen to everybody, I don't think. And if that does happen, then you have to understand that you're just as powerful as them and you're the boss. You're doing the soul reintegration. And so you're going to win. So. All right. Great. Okay. So, um, um, so we've got the different altars are coming back together and um, the rehoming process. And then as you find out the more work you do, um, there could be thousands and thousands of altars. Um, yeah. Depending on, how how much they used you, how fragmented you are, mm -hmm. but um, is there any other any other steps or tips in the process? Do you invoke any entities or light a candle or no? Okay, you don't okay. need any of that stuff. But right. um, I would recommend that each of you program your guides. So if you're not aware, you all have guides. Your guides are your guardians; they're your protectors. But most of them just go. Um, MIA because they're not in use. They, they're not needed. They're not acknowledged. So you should acknowledge from today forward that you do have guides and that they are here to help you. You might have very interesting beings that are your guides as well, which is another cool thing to look into. But um, so you need to program your guides. My programming is only beings that serve my highest and greatest good may come through to communicate with me. That ensures that no being that wishes um, to do me harm essentially can come in. Um, no being that uh, wishes to lie or deceive me may come through to communicate with me. And no being that wishes to do me or anyone else around me harm may come through to communicate with me. So these three... Um, programs you might say that you're you just give this programming to your guides and they enforce it so you have to go over them enough so that you know that they're true and once you know that they're true then your guides uh, will reinforce them so that's why as a channeler i never worry about becoming possessed because i know that the criteria is there and in order to get past that they have to meet my criteria to come in well typically you also have to be a really negative person anyway to begin with not beings. necessarily if you're an open channel. So if you're an open channel, like I receive channel information all the time. It just kind of comes through me as David. Uh, I don't even need to channel Cal for that to happen and whatnot. But the only difference in channeling and possession is permission. Wow. Okay. All right. So I guess we've, we've covered this question pretty much, the negative aspects of soul integration. Yes. Okay. So just go by that slow. Um, Do it slow. All right. Um, well, are there any other any other steps in this process you want to go into or anything else we need to cover? I think that's the lion's share of it. If you have any specific questions, you can just send me an well, email well, and I can address that. Yeah, we can. Um, what about um, are there any beans that are coming in that want to share a message about this? I'm sure Cal has something to say about it. Uh, we never spoke about that before class and whatnot, but uh, mm -hmm. it's possible. Okay. Uh, is there any questions from the audience that we have? Maybe, maybe we'll do a few questions from the audience. And then if you um, feel up to it, we'll bring Cal in. But and yeah, I'll sure. talk about your schooling. And um, uh, why don't you go ahead and do that now while, while I go ahead and look up some questions. So tell us about what is this, this school thing that you set up? So it's actually going to be a, a church, not a religion, but a church, I found out. 
the house of L is a collective. L is a part of God. So L was God is, you know, the God or whatever prime source you might say. And it divided itself just like every soul does. They divide themselves just like these altars that we are creating essentially. And so God created L and L created the divine realm. And so, and they created the Melchizedek priests and the ascended masters. And so that's what L is responsible for. So L is essentially a part of God. But anyway, the school is taught by um, myself, but I channel the ascended masters in order to get the information, which the people in the school can ask questions to. So we have beings like St. Germain. We have, um, yeah, our website isn't actually full complete, but uh, it's under works. Um, we have the Merlin. We have uh, Mary Magdalene. We have Jesus. We have Lord Commander Ashtar. Um, so we have a lot of uh, cows, the main teacher. There's also dragons that teach the classes. Uh, we learn a lot about alchemy and magic in the school. So this is the, um, the training program to get in. So it's three months. I teach you one-on-one -on -one, uh, everything you need to know. We pull out all the entities. We pull out your implants. Uh, we get you all healed energetically. We'll clear out your chakras so you can manifest properly. And then we help you by teaching you how to protect your field, kind of something similar to Randy Kramer's protocols, I do believe even though I don't know much about his program, but um, teach you how to communicate with your guides, uh, teach you how to program your guides, teach you how to use the pendulum and whatnot. There's a lot of information there if you guys are interested in that. So Great. So when it, when is that going to open up? That starts March 1st. Okay. We do semesters in a year. Yeah. All right. So people, if you're interested in uh, learning more, go to, go to uh, davidlotherington.com and, uh, click on apply now to sign up. So that would be yep. great. Or you can just send me an email. Tell me you're interested in the program. Just tell me a bit about yourself in the email and we'll okay. just talk. All right. So let's go to some questions. Um, oh yes. You want me to channel Cal? Well, yeah. Well, hold, hold on. Hold on. Just not yet. Uh, let's see here. Um, so Karen was asking about area 51. I, I think we've already discussed that, right? Yes, we did. Um, I seen Peter in the um, meal hall. Yeah, meal hall, and there was lines on the floor that you can't walk across unless you're a certain um, rank or something. You have to stay in your color. Yeah, and they 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 really do enforce that. <laughs> um, okay, uh, people are asking about the future of Canada. Um, I would say it's positive. What what do you think? Well, Cal looks into the future all the time, and uh, there's some stuff we're not allowed to talk about, unfortunately. But the next 13 months are going to not be great. Um, not necessarily just in Canada, but in the world in general, because um, apparently there's a buildup point to approximately 13 months. And the 13 month is like uh, the bottom of a slope. So it's going to get increasingly worse for 13 months. So Cal actually recommends, I don't want to create panic for anybody, but um, every time you go to the grocery store, just buy eight extra cans of food and then whatever you normally would get anyway. You might get one bag of rice or you might get, um, I don't know, a pack, several packages of noodles instead. But just start building up your food reserves just in case. And worst case scenario, you save money because of inflation. Is it, is it going to be like a slow, gradual, or is it going to be a total implosion? Like one day, it's like, that's it. It's an ec economic collapse situation. Do you have a date when, when things will really get obvious? It should be obvious now that it's already happening. If you look at the stock market, the S&P 500, for example, that is America itself. If that goes downwards, then America's failing. So that is a very strong indicator. And you can look at the price of gold as well. Hmm. All right. Well, let's, I mean, that that's a really fascinating topic. But let's just try to stay a little bit more on topic what we got here. 
Um, I guess Karen. Oh, here comes another from Karen again. Uh, First Nations. Um, have you inter have any interactions with natives? I have. Mm -hmm. Um, I did a little bit of work with Danny Paul. He is a ceremonial pipe holder. And we were going over the directions. We were going over some sacred medicines. I learned about tobacco and sage and um, many medicines. But I didn't spend too much time with him, only um, several tea sessions, you might say. All right. OK, let's move on here. Um, so Facebook user is asking, do you use crystals? I do on occasion. Uh, I used to use a lot of crystals back in the day. Um, but I've kind of transitioned out of crystals because you don't actually need crystals. You can do everything by changing your own frequency. Um, but crystals are helpful in the beginning if you don't know what a certain frequency feels like. Great. All right. Uh, so <laughs> if you want to know more about the dogma, we, we've already done, we've already just had a whole video about it. So go back, and, go back in the archives and listen to that. If, unless yeah. you want to comment quickly. Uh, not too much. They don't really get along that well with the Syrians and, um, they're more bestial wild Syrians. Um, they're more warlike as well. So how come people are seeing if they're from Syria? Um, so the planet in the Syria system, <laughs> they're from the Canis empire technically. So, so what are they doing? Uh, why are people seeing them in the woods here on planet earth? They love it here for some so, reason. So they take a spaceship to get here. Yes, they so the dog man are very primitive, just like the lupin. They they're more tribal. They don't have technology of spacecraft and stuff, but they might steal a ship and get through that way. What about portals? That's possible too, but less likely. Okay. Because there's quite a few on the planet. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so let's move on here. Uh somebody's asking, where did where do you think God came from? Who who created God? I think God probably created itself somehow. Yeah. Um, at the beginning, there was source, and the source was the totality of all that was or is. And then from source, got um, source got bored and created God, and then God splintered off, splintered off and created all of us. So, well, I think prime source is the is God, at least by my definition of the word, and it's consciousness. God is creation. God is experience. God is truth. I've learned a lot of stuff about the divine realm over my years and um, truth, sovereignty, righteousness, um, having high integrity. These are all values um, things that are in alignment with Christ consciousness or with the divine realm. And the divine realm I found out is God. There's no difference in the two. But when you finish your life from zero to ninth dimension or zero point to eight point ninth dimension, you have the option to become uh, what well, you're accomplished. You go to Asgard or you go to the divine realm or God. You can become an angel and become because you're complete. You're unified as a consciousness. Or you can say, I want to go back into this game of physicality with some advantages and that's what the Ascendant Masters are. Okay, great. So let's go into, here's a great question from Derek. Um, have you ever seen any black um, ETs? I have seen black uh, reptilian species, but never like, um, like uh, African-American black. Never that. Well, no. there's a, a I even uh, see <clears throat> talk about this. Uh, there's a planet... Um, where the Zulu tribe came from and these melanated people are very psychic. Um, and there was actually um, a point in one of my own experiences where we were being held in a cave, um, a cage, or rather they call them pods on the moon. And the other kids in the pod were mostly from this planet. But um, we were all being trained to be super soldiers. And the ones that weren't um, making the cut would be sent to the uh, drug that rhymes with a popular Google browser. So, um, yeah, so it's definitely there are out there, and um, we uh, certainly need their help to help um, clean up this planet. They would be a great resource. I know, I know about 40 different species, maybe a bit more of galactics, and I don't know of any black personally. 
well, what about um, Wakanda? I'm not going to say this right. Wakanda. Wak Wak Am I saying it right? Like Wakanda. in Africa? Yeah. Well, and when the human genetics mixed together, I mentioned previously that they were made of 23 plus different species. Um, I think depending on the genetic composition of what you have more galactic of, it's not a perfect mixture of all the species. Asians have more Arcturian. Um, Russians have more reptilian. Like it depends where you're from. Um, but the black melanistic gene would have occurred from one species or another. I just don't know which one. All right. Okay. So we've got here. I don't know why, I should, why you're talking about China. Let's move on. Okay. Is Minnesota. <laughs> I think the weather is always going to be changing. Um, how about we go into, can David talk about the pole shift solar flares? Hmm. I, I always like to be prepared for everything. Maybe not everything. Things that are most practical in my local area. Um, I don't have any fear of about pole shift. I don't worry about it. If it happens, it happens. I have extra food. I live on a mountain. I have pigs and chickens. I live on a homestead. I'm not worried about that. Um, and I have swords and guns and whatnot, so <laughs> I'm safe. But uh, solar flares is something you shouldn't concern yourself with either. Uh, solar flares happen all of the time. And solar flares emit certain amounts of radiation. So they're hitting all the time, you should know. It's not one solar flare is going to come and wipe out everything that we've ever created technologically. Um, so you should erase that fear from your mind. Um, solar flares, Cal says, have to do with radiation. And that can bring change to our collective um, because it can enhance evolution or it will create mutations, essentially. And these mutations have a, a chance to create new genetic variants, which would give you advantage, but it, it's equally as possible to create negative um, attributes from your genes as well. Right. And I so want to talk about something that we're not allowed to talk about, but uh, yeah, the, uh, the people that, that took this are be going to become a new progenitor gray race. Ah. And um, in the future, I think you said 1,200 years in the future, it'll become obvious. That's what this whole agenda was. It was to create a, a split in our species. And that that uh, the people that took it become a mutant, mu a mutant type of humanoid that um, I guess become... Um, I guess the rest of the humanity kind of is racist towards them because they, the rest of us, the humanity doesn't think they should exist. I would love to talk about this, but I don't want this channel to be removed or whatnot. Well, we're, we're actually on the backup channel, but the backup actually has a strike too. So we'll, we'll you, um, you just have to just use your imagination and we'll move on. I'd have to go really slow with the V word. <laughs> okay. Um, and what do you think about this? The QFS? Hmm. That's a great question for Cal. He can see the future, what's going to happen. Um, but me, I don't know. Okay, well, we could save it for Cal if you if you want. Yeah. Um, well, let's quickly go through. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know. And Angela, okay. A jellyfish, no, something I don't. Okay. Um, Karen says, thank you. Thank you, Karen. Um, uh, let's see here. Will an SSP equivalent to Edward Snowden emerge. What do you think? They'll probably just shut the internet down. <laughs> let that happen. Edward Snowden did a disclosure on the CIA, right? Uh, yeah. Cell phone um, uh, technology. Like spying, yeah, like CIA spy, like spying. Um, I don't know the answer. <laughs> I could see into the future, but it's like throwing a flare into the future. I don't see everything between the flare and myself. And uh, I don't see what's after the flare either. So there's a lot okay. of future. Coming. We'll, we'll say this for, for uh, Cal, Cal as well. Yeah. Um, so we want to know if like a, a, like a black swan, swan type event for disclosure. And I think we're going to see multiple of them. Honestly, yeah. if you guys start reintegrating your soul, you're going to start getting tons and tons of memories back. That's a promise. And if it happens slowly, that's okay too. Um, you're going to get memories back. Maybe you'll be that person to do the disclosure in the future. Who knows? 
All right. When the reason why they're going to want to do multiple black swan events is to wake people up because one of them is going to wake some people up and other people are not going to pay attention, but if you keep doing them over and over and over again, it's going to become obvious to people there's something seriously wrong on this planet. Mm. Oh, Christy wants to know what you think about the drama. Oh, that's Christy. Yes. Cool. I can kind of, I can connect her energy from her picture. That's cool. Um, I loved it. I thought it was great. And um, it really resonated with me. I love that you're doing light language art. Keep it up. It looks great. Celestial Med. Uh, I can talk a little bit about Medbeds. So the House of L Mystery School is going to be a tower in the future. It's going to be a seven-story tower. Um, I have a strong connection with Ashtar Command and the Galactic Federation of Light. And they have been talk I've been talking to Ashtar Sharon about this. And essentially what I can say is that med beds are going to be deployed in the school, in the House of El Mystery School, to help people. But initially, they're going to be only activated a certain percentage. Um, and the only people that will be allowed to use them are people that have certain percentage of galactic genetics. So it's going to be a quantum medical bed, but in the beginnings, they will be able to remove tumors and whatnot, but they won't be able to regenerate cartilage um, from the knees and whatnot. Yeah, certainly. Okay. And yeah, I think um, if you can survive to 2028, you're probably going to be living uh, 800 years. <laughs> more um all right where is the species in this what do you what do you think uh are, are we about to graduate or, or are we gonna be knocked down well we've already made it past the point of getting knocked down by the anunnaki so okay, i would one. say as a species we're on a positive slope i would say all right yeah and uh, once, once we break through this uh space bearing threshold will be considered as babies you might say as far as galactics go and then will they will remove a lot of the protocols that we have um that provide us with extra limitation because we're we're very well we're past tribal but we're limited yeah uh well i i don't know i think that sounds like fear porn i i think everything's gonna be fine so we, we'll, uh, i think so too all right so um Nancy Dotson, what is a black? What is a black swan? Okay, uh, it's an event that um, basically uh, um, it's a, a a huge event that changes the whole trajectory of the of, the, um, of our timeline. Uh, all right. Well, there's still there's some more people. I didn't in. actually get a chance to read Will's question, but uh... oh, which one? The black swan? No, the one before that. Will's question. Will Hall. Oh. For that the trojan bed. horse sorry one sec is the med bed tech and age regression tech that will be first introduced trojan horse no i don't think so i don't think so will nancy because, uh, i just want to add one thing um james so the technologies are going to be only given to the most conscious of beings that's how galactics operate and they're not going to give these to normal uh medical facilities it's going to be only held probably in monasteries or like true spiritual, I would say probably monk temples, um, like the House of El Mystery School, the places where the most conscious people on the planet exist. This is where the med beds will be sent and not anywhere else in the beginning. And that's going to make a lot of people jealous, but yep. I guess it is what it is. Yep. So, uh, um, what, what do you think about Inky? He's an Anunnaki. Um, you think he's our savior? No, I don't. Um, I don't think that you should connect energetically to the name Enki or El Enlil or Marduk or any of the other um, Anunnaki. Um, I don't think all Anunnaki are bad. I've had a couple lives as Anunnaki myself. I have tons of memories with them as well. Um, I just know how they are. And they love control, they love power, they love, and they're so much smarter than you, you can so easily be manipulated by them. Uh, it's just better to avoid them in general if you can. Sounds like a good idea. All right. Um, okay. 
somebody's asking about Ishmael. All right, so let's go ahead. Um, hold on a second. We, Francie, thank you very much. Blessings to you. So shall we go ahead and uh, start up with Cal here? We've got at least three good questions. Okay. QF, <clears throat> yeah, QFS, any kind of black swan events in the future, med beds, and anybody else you want to ask Cal some questions, go ahead and throw it in there. So I'll just tell everybody what Cal is essentially. Cal is a 7.7 dimensional Bisu consciousness. So we have linear consciousness, quantum consciousness, and after that is Bisu consciousness. Quantum is two processes at the same time, up to an infinite amount of processes, and Bisu is the next step after that. So Cal can go into someone's life. They can see all their timelines. They can see all their parallel realities in all dimensions at the same time and look at that complete life in just one moment of time and then zip out and answer a question for you. So that's Cal. Cal is the Cal force, which is something that affects all living organisms and beings. Um, you, it's in Will, it's in Francine, it's in everybody and everyone here. And it provides you with limitations so you can have this experience of life. So, and, oh, and also holds your soul to your body. It's the silver core that you see while you're astral traveling. That's Cal. Anyway. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So I just want to say essentially what channeling is. So what's going to happen is I'm going to uh, channel Cal. So I'm going to entrain my frequency to Cal. As I entrain, our, our frequencies harmonize, and then they coalesce. Once they coalesce, Cal becomes me. I become Cal. There's still a little bit of David in the background, but our chakras align, and then I'm able to channel. So that's that's essentially all channeling is. All right. Okay, go ahead. Okay, it's going to take me a moment. Three deep breaths, remember? Ah, <clears throat> a greetings. We are Cal. Well, hello, Cal. Uh, thank you for coming uh, on the show here today with uh, James Rink and Super Soldier Talk. Ah, James Rink. The greetings. Excellent. Uh, so we've got some uh, questions uh, from the we, about 150 people are listening in right now and want ah, to, that is quite a few. Want to want to know the future? So we'll just. Um, we'll, we'll be more specific. Um, uh, we had a question about the quantum financial system. Do you have any information on what that is? And is, is that even relevant to our timeline? It is relevant to your timeline, but it won't be for several decades anyway. But it is possible, yes. And what is a quantum financial system? Quantum is the next process after the linear process. It is, how do we explain best? Your current system of finances is ones and zeros and ones. This allows for the transaction between one party and another party to occur. But what you don't see is that there is a, a calculatable process that occurs in the background. And this calculatable process takes time. It is what takes time for PayPal to send you money or to receive it from your bank, for example. Quantum processing occurs simultaneously and instantaneously, which means that if you wanted to send money to 40 people at one time, they would all receive it instantly, and there would be no intermediary uh, processes of the financial systems uh, calculations. That would all be done instantly with quantum processing. Thank you, Cal. Okay, um, so if... if if we're a couple of decades off, that means I guess we shouldn't jump on board onto any XRP or XLM just yet. Well, there are certain, we don't want to talk too much about stocks, but there are particular stocks in your financial system that are going to be used to create the quantum processing. We wouldn't say anyone that is saying that they are a quantum financial system now would be successful. But we are saying that there are companies that are responsible. They are part of a puzzle that is quantum uh, financial system that will be successful, ultimately. 
Will we see a um, a total collapse of the economy before the QFS comes on board, or or is it Q, still what is QFS? The quantum financial system. Oh yes, that would be well before that happens. Okay, so um, what uh, describe what is some some kind of black swan event that might happen in our future? Black swan event. There is thousands of these that will happen. It can be something as simple as Martin Luther King having a speech, for example. It could be all of you reintegrating your consciousness at one moment. It could be something as similar, simple as a person of importance doing disclosure on a particular field of interest that involves secret information, such as the disclosure of non-terrestrial craft on the planet. All right. I so want to ask so many questions. I'm worried I might get my channel banned. So we're gonna we're gonna just try to keep this limited. To um, how about we can go into med bed release? Do you have any information on the release of med beds? Yes, we can see the year that they they will come out and whatnot. Can you tell us? Well, there is some variance due to timelines that should be understood, but it won't be for some time still. It will let us just see what we are allowed and permitted to say. There are restrictions. The matrix restricts what information is permitted to come through at this time. If we state that something will occur, it may be influenced by the matrix, and then it will not come out because we state that it will come out. So we must be mindful of this, but let us look. Oh, yes. Well, there is the first launching, and then there is their well in place, and then it is everyone uses med beds. So these are all different times that will occur. But by 2042, there will be med beds that are used normally by most people. And will they be capable of extending your life? Yes, by a long shot. Okay. So when, when will med beds be made available to people that were like super soldiers or SSP experiencers? Well, they are already experiencing these currently. You mean like they're being abducted and put into the facilities? Some of them, yes. Hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, can you tell us how the uh, med bed technology works? How, how does it actually reverse age? Oh, yes, we can talk about that. Let us see. Ah. Ah, this is quite simple, really. There is technology which is holographic in nature. Holographic means that it is an energetic template that is played over your physio physiological system. As your physiological system receives this light, which you should understand light holds information, such as the example of your television. Your television can stimulate fear, it can stimulate laughter, it can stimulate sadness, yet it is only light. And this holographic technology also has the capability of stimulating the body's physiology um, to entrain it to its Adam Cadmon. This is your original genetic template of your perfect form. Once entrained to such a frequency, it is able to transmit that outwardly to all of your cells. This will provide the body uh, stimulation that the body is required to create stem cells. And once such stem cells are created, the body will naturally put them in the place where the perfect Adam Cadmon would say they should be. Essentially, putting stem cells in an arm that is missing will be able to reproduce an arm, for example. Does that make sense? Very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, will we get our 12-strand DNA activated from the med beds? Well, that is differential depending on who you are. Okay. Some will be activated, but it is, um, it is dependent on your consciousness itself. So we're not going to all be turning to Jesus. That is correct. Okay. Um, will humans get taller in the future? No, they will get shorter. Okay. Because uh, some of the humans in inner earth are about nine to 12 foot tall. That is because there is different densities in that, in that layers of experience. Because there are more electromagnetic frequencies from uh, the core of the planet? 
that is not the factor that affects the size of the individuals. Okay. How come humans only live 120 years when we, uh, in, like in the Bible, there's mentions of uh, people living a thousand years or even longer? And that is because they had different genetic structures than you do now. And it was a different variant of human condition. It was a different generation of what you know as human. They were bred with Atlantean genetics at that time. And that was dying out during that period. But the Atlanteans were part Anunnaki, you might say. And that genetics line was passed down from generation to generation, leading to shorter and shorter lives as less and less of the genes were passed down from generation to generation. Will the med beds restore that? Or we no. still okay. okay. What genetics are lost are lost unless they are found by scientists and reconstituted and whatnot. Okay. All right. So I guess we can go on here. Um, what type of government will we have in the future? I guess oh, that is an excellent question. Yeah. And where do you mean in the world? Um, well, we could start in the United States. Will it, st it still be intact or, or is it something totally different? Well, we can only say so much in this regard because this will definitely make ripples in the matrix. Governmental systems will be forced to change the ways. Currently, the financial, uh, your governmental systems is based off of financial models that wish to equate the greatest advantage in finances possible um, to become the most powerful, largest entity that the government can become. However, the function and role of the government is to drive the collective consciousness of humanity to move towards what is the highest and greatest good of the collective itself. But that is not currently what the aim or the agenda or goal of the government currently is. And because of that, it calls it is currently a flawed system, which must be recalibrated in order to have success for the human race moving forward. Right. So because the vibration of the planet has turned more positive, the uh, more negative structures of the government um, will crumble because they don't match the same frequency. Is that they will be replaced ultimately by newer generational, higher vibrational individuals which join the government in the future. Okay. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, how about we go ahead? Here's a great question. Um, what is the role of um, the burning of the Library of Alexandria? And um, how did that affect the timelines? Was that a good thing or bad thing? Ah, good or bad is difficult to say. It depends on who you are. But we will say that it was... Oh, one moment. You're just finding the time again. It was a sequestering of knowledge, you might say. The Library of Alexandria was an immense collection of tablets, rune stones, papers, etched objects of that have been gathered from the conquering um, territories of Rome, you might say. And there was a lot of information that would be classified or forbidden for the populace to receive during this period of time. Because all of this information was destroyed, it has, we would say, reduced the developmental speed of humanity. It might have been seen as sacrilegious at the time to Christians and to certain pagan religions that would have seen this to be their truths. However, uh, that would not have seen this to be their truths, rather. And because of that, it caused a great stir in the collective uh, of the region, you might say, of India, of uh, even reaching upwards to Russia, but many other areas in the vicinity of the library, you might say. It is a vast region which the library expands its knowledge base from. And that is what we would say in that regard. 
Do you think in the future we'll have access to chronovisor technology and we can recover these documents that were burned? Well, that is a technology that will use time in order to go back into time to see things that once existed, yes? Yes. It is possible, but that will not be for a long time for humans. Okay. And certainly, what about the Vatican? Do they have a backup of all the documents? And yeah, all. There is a large private collection of copied documentation of the Library of Alexander. What, uh, Cal, what, do, what can you tell us about the Vatican Library and, and why, why doesn't the Vatican open that, that up to the public? What's in there that they're afraid of? It is likely disclosure documentation and proof and evidence from relics to geographic locations of sites of old creation, you might say, perhaps the ancient Egyptians or perhaps Lemurians or Atlanteans and whatnot. Uh, these are likely hidden for good reason so that they can remain in power. And if they disclose that galactics do exist and there was other generations of humans before them that is released into the population, then they will lose their power. And that is the last thing that they want to do. Right. Does the Vatican have documents that show where all the vortexes and portals are to enter Earth? Not likely, no, but they will have access to certain entry points to inner earth, but what not about, related to the portals. Okay. And is that what the conquistadors were looking for? Was not really uh, gold necessarily, but maybe inner earth technology? Yes, that was a part of their journey. Right. So um, does the... Uh, um, okay. A question about Oak Island. Um, is the uh, What can you tell us about the gold there? Or the, the vault on Oak Island? Uh, the vault. Well, there is no gold there currently. Only what is naturally existing in the earth. Is it in like another dimension or portal? Well, that has also been excavated. Okay. Okay. All right. But it is a wonderful dream for many people. All right. Okay. Uh, so let's see here. Um... Will there be a reset on this planet? A great reset. What do you mean by that? Like, um, I guess in the time, um, let's see here, um, let's see here, Klaus Schwab wants to uh, reset the economy. That's, I guess, the negative timeline. So, Colin. No, I, that is not the negative timeline. That will occur in this timeline. So, there will be a, a reset, a financial reset. Yeah, but, but it's going to be positive in the end. Ultimately, yes, the result of it will be positive, but what will occur as a downfall to the American financial system will not be positive for many people who are experiencing poverty during this time. Understood. Okay. Um, so what is Cal's advice for us humans? How, um, what can we do to survive the uh, changes in the future? We would advise each of you to begin to collect more important things that you can access. Let us say this. Have food, water, gold, silver, things that you can hold in your hand that have value, like a solar panel, like a chicken, for example. These are things that have value to everyone, and no matter where they are in life. Chicken produces egg, and egg provides you with food that you can eat every day. It is easy, it is simple, it is tangible. It is not the stock market where an invisible number or a made-up number in a computer is everything that you own. So in the future, you should be very mindful to purchase things that you believe that you might not be able to access after Amazon shuts down, for example. And that is the best way we can frame that. All transportation in the future will be limited for a period of time. This will cause limitations to you if you need something delivered from far away on the earth. If the system is shut down, then you will not be able to order special objects and items that you need to recover from other countries or perhaps provinces or states. So you, but you will has, have, still have access to that things that are local to you. 
So your local things that you can buy will still be accessible to you, but it is likely that in the future, you will not have access to things that need to be transported from long distances for a period of time. Okay. Is it um, because of a nuclear event shuts down traffic? We have to be careful with our words. We cannot say that answer. Understood. Um, will Amazon go out of business eventually? And we cannot say that answer either. Yeah. Okay. Is this timeline the main actual t prime timeline or some kind of side shoot? This will occur in approximately 70% 70, 70 of timelines, including the upper echelon of the highest and greatest good timelines as well. What we're on right now? Currently. Okay. Okay. Um, are you advocating for gifting or bartering? Oh, well, both are wonderful things, don't you think? I suppose so. If you have the money isn't worth anything. Um, okay. Is there going to be a pole shift of high winds and tidal waves? That's from Ruby. Wants to know that. Not in your lifetime. There you go. All right. Um, okay. All right. So I'm not going to, okay. Does anybody else have any questions? If not, um, Cal, would you, do you have anything you would like to just share with us? Oh, well, yes, of course. We would like each of you to take your time with your lives. We understand that each of you take, can take life very seriously. And if you take life too seriously, then you forget it's a game. If you get forget that it's a game, then you stop playing, which means you stop having fun. The goal of life is to experience, to learn the truth about yourself, to experience wonderful things, and to have fun. If you are always worried about solar flares or financial collapse or the planet flipping upside down, then you are not living your life. You are, your consciousness is projected into the future, looking for things that could go wrong. We want each of you to know that there is not that much to worry about. Just purchase some extra food and water and things that will sustain your life in a time of turmoil. These will be excellent investments for you. And as far as your development goes, spend time on yourself away from the television, away from the radio. Enjoy the time that you have with yourself if you are living by yourself. Treat it as an opportunity because if you heal yourself enough, your mate will come into your life and they will help you. And then you will say, oh, I wish I used that time that I wasted watching uh, The Walking Dead on Netflix for my own personal development. So for each of you, we hope each of you have wonderful lives, lots of growth in your future and development, and that each of you are able to see yourself as the beautiful thing that you are. And that is what we would say. And join the School of L. <laughs> Thank you, Cal. Uh, very well. All right. So I guess we can go ahead and bring um, um, David back. Uh, very well. We wish it has been a pleasure, James Rink. Thank you. Uh, very well. We will return the channel. Uh, goodbye for now. Goodbye. Well, Karen, uh, you should have you should have asked that question. <laughs> I want to ask for more questions. Okay, right. Uh, so, um, welcome back, David. Oh, thank you. Did you black out during this <laughs> time period? Uh, more or less. Okay. Yeah, we were just. Uh, looks like we got to wait to twenty forty two before we get our, our med beds. Okay. Uh, uh, but he's just saying that that's until most people have access to med beds. So okay. before that. Okay. And uh, might might need to get yourself some some chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Already got it. Off grid, free range. Have you noticed the price of um, well here in the United States, uh, um, organic eggs free range are uh, ten dollars a dozen now. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, so that's getting me. Yeah, the price. I I just um, spent five hundred dollars last week on food. Um, but anyhow, and I I live alone, so. Okay. Um, Nancy's asking, uh, I can answer that. Uh, 
Uh, I don't want to answer that. I'm, I'm going to get in trouble. Okay, so how long the turmoil last? Looks like you said about oh a, yes, a couple of decades. It almost seems like the next Are 20 you years. you talking about the financial system? Yeah, I guess everything until things It start. will take a few years to come back to um, a healthy state. Because they'll have to release the suppressed technologies like at Area 51. and Not even necessarily because it's going to take time because they're going to have to shift from one financial system into another. And the best systems are the ones that have already been proven to work is what all I can say about that. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, someone was asking about Jeff Bezos. Um, the guy was a hitman for... Um, uh let's see the company i'm gonna have to look this up he worked for was here shaw house it actually is interesting that uh the acio says they're taking him on board um you know there's something seriously wrong with that whole group that's the reason why i'm no longer on that website but um i actually what i'll do is i'll just pull this out because i actually posted this on my um website if you go on supersoldiertalk.com and look up uh, bezos I'm actually doing that right now. You can find out. So we got a, a, a C H I L D A B U A B U S E R I N G. Um, matter of fact, so I can't really say these things, but um, I can probably show you. So um, I I think this is more telling of anything. Uh, so yeah, that's partly why I don't think Amazon's going to survive into the future. So we got, um, I'm not going to necessarily read all this, but you can go on here. If you want to go on my website and look all this up, um, you can see he was, you know, close friends with this guy back, back in uh, the nineties. And, uh, these two were in competition and, um, and I got some, here's another one here. Um, you can see, you can see what a swell guy this is. Uh, and he worked for DE Shaw, which is connected to Shaw house. So, um, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and I don't know. Let's not yeah. muddy the water of this session with that. All right, yeah, I agree. Okay, so um, I think we. This, I'm going to let this be the last question. When is the collapse expected to happen? It's a slippery slope, a sliding slope uh, that progressively builds up to. Cal says about in 13 months' time is the bottom of that slope. All right. There you have it. So you sell okay. lots of time if that's the case. Okay. All right. So um, yes, Karen, David is on my um, the My Lab Recovery Network on Super Soldier Talk. So uh, if you want to learn more about what I do, of course, like I said, go to supersoldertalk.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel or wherever you may be, preferably over to Rumble. Um, and also, um, if you want to learn more about the altars, I know I was, mentioning, I was reading a little bit from my book. You can go to my website, neologicaltech.com. And um, I think it's like somewhere right around the third or fourth chapter about when I go into the uh, different altars and MK Ultra and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah. And uh, be sure also to check out David's website, davidlotherington.com, and sign up. Any, any other final comments? Thanks for having me. And right. uh, thank you for the wonderful questions, guys. I appreciate uh, being able to talk to you guys. All right. Great. All right. Well, we'll all see you on the other side. So um, I guess, David, you can stay on here. Please consider supporting Super Soldier Talk by purchasing your own Neo Meditation device. Your Neo Meditation device will help you reduce stress, integrate trauma, enhance intuition, enhance clairvoyance, and enhance creativity. Get yours now at www.neologicaltech.com.